Hi, this is Walter Weesey with Yellowstone Country Fly Fishing and Parks Fly Shop with my fly tying video for uh, November 13th, 2019. And it's been uh, quite a while since I've done one here. I uh, thought I'd be able to do them through the summer on a semi-regular basis, but uh, I actually had by far my busiest uh, guide season ever, and so that didn't happen. But going to get back to it and hopefully put them out about a week every about once a week or every 10 days uh, through the winter here. What I'm going to be doing here today is a fly called an Upbeat Betis, which is a uh, fly by Bucky McCormick out of uh, Blue Ribbon Flies in West Yellowstone. And he ties them in kind of the standard, uh, you know, gray olive Betis coloration. And Parks Fly Shop stocks those and does pretty well on them, uh, like in the Lamar drainage, for example. But uh, I actually tie him in purple as well, which as far as I know is not a color he does. And this was actually my most productive dry fly on the Yellowstone uh, during the month of October. And I actually expect it's going to continue working pretty well all the way through the winter because we uh, we have beta hatches all through the winter. And uh, this is a size 18 emerger hook here. And then my thread is purple in 8.0. And the first thing I'm going to do here is set the wing. My wing is going to be a silver uh, widow's web, or you know, it, it, you can use whatever product you like. Um, Pugliese fibers, I think, is what they use in the original video. But hopefully, you can tell here this is a lot of fibers. Uh, this is a very heavy bunch of fibers, and uh, virtually all the flotation in this fly comes from the wing, and so you do want to go pretty heavy on that. So I'm going to tie that with the butt ends facing forward over the eye, like so. And I'm going to get that in there with three or four or five really, really tight, strong wraps. It's basically as tight as I can get them. And I'm going to come in here and I'm actually going to trim off all of the long side of that bundle of fibers. And, and then I'll set that aside and I'll keep using those for a bunch more of these. But then I'm going to take those butt ends here and then I'm going to make a couple more wraps forward because I didn't get that set quite where I wanted it. And then I'm going to come in here and stand that up. Uh, using thread wraps in front there and then come back get my uh, thread on the bare shank there and then this part's optional but as you know I'm a big fan of super glue uh, and so I'm going to kind of set that wing with super glue keep that thing upright like so and then notice I've got my thread now I'm, I'm making a thread base all the way to the bend here and then weld down the bend um, but I did not really attempt to taper that uh, and you'll see why here in a moment and the next step here, I'm making a thread bump right at the back end of the hook shank there, trying to keep that, you know, more or less on top of itself. And uh, honestly, I, I don't have my usual backdrop here, and so it's kind of hard to see. If I was just tying that uh, as normal, I'd probably make a neater thread bump there. M anyway, my tail on this fly is going to be medium pardo uh, Coque de Leon. And you could also use micro fibbits or just very long hackle fibers, uh, whatever you like. And then I'm going to use three fibers on that for a tail. Um, this being an 18, I like to have three. If I was tying at a 20, I'd use two. On a 16, I'd probably go up to as many as five. And that's kind of the size range I tie this fly in, 16 to 20. If I was tying the, uh, um, you know, a black one, I'd be doing it in a 20 just for a trico, the, uh, the betas versions are 18s and 20s, and then I'll also do a copper colored one in a 16. And then my, uh, so my tails are going to be those three fibers, and I want them to be pretty long here. And what I did is I, I went up onto the hook shank a bit here. I'm going to tie those in on my side of the hook shank and then use thread pressure to bring those up on top of the hook like that. And like I said, those should be pretty long. And then I'm going to wrap back all the way to that thread bump I made to start with here. And ideally that should flare those out straight behind the hook shank. And that got them pretty close. It didn't quite get them where I want it to be. But what I'm going to do here instead, since it didn't quite get what I wanted there is I'm going to come in and actually make one turn right behind those and then that's going to stand those up uh, kind of nice and parallel with the hook shank there. And then I'm going to wrap all the way back up to that thread bump where I tied in the wings. I'm going to trim off those fibers and then if I need to, uh, you know on a 20 I probably wouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to come back and sort of retaper that body a little bit here and then end up kind of right, right at the back end of that thread bump. Now my thorax on this fly is going to be ice dub in uh, UV purple, and you could also use uh, standard purple, 
or uh, you know what have you and then I'm going to come in here and make a couple turns up onto that thread bump and you notice there that smoothed out that transition um, so that's why I didn't bother making an aggressive uh, attempt to smooth out that transition and then I get up here to the eye and then I'm going to make a uh, half hitch here first because I, I couldn't find my whip finisher for a moment um, okay, now I'm going to get my whip finisher make about three turns and then I actually like to do two three turn whip finishes on this fly just because I'm not going to use head cement I don't want that to uh, clog that wing or clog that eye so I do two three turn head whip finishes uh, rather than just one four or five turn uh, thinking that if one of them fails the other one will be okay and I'm going to come in here last step and I'm going to trim that wing I'm going to trim that wing fairly long um, down just past that bend there and so it should kind of look a lot like a comparadon um, like that somewhat longer wing and then when I fish this fly I'm going to dope the wing primarily and so the rest of it's going to kind of sit flush in the film but it, it really surprised me when I started tying these you know I didn't even start tying this fly until September how well it floated and how visible it is um, because as long as you tie that wing thick and leave it fairly long it's going to take up a lot of floatant and also shoot water off on the back cast and so it's almost like a miniature strike indicator there and I'll usually fish that fly in tandem with uh, one of my purple hazy cripples or uh, the purple phase uh, emerger or something like a parachute atoms or what have you but uh, I'll fish that as a dropper behind a slightly more buoyant dry fly but it, as long as you're not fishing you know rapids with this and I don't recommend doing so uh, it'll actually float pretty well. This fly accounted for some pretty good fish for us in, in uh, early October, kind of my last few float trips on the Yellowstone. If you uh, check out the Parks Fly Shop blog, I've actually got kind of a more uh, in-depth description of where and why and how I'm fishing this. But uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I hope uh, to get videos out on a more regular basis. Uh, have a good week.